Justin Kutcher here, joined now by the GM of the Washington Wizards, Tommy Shepard. Tommy, it's great to see you, even if it's virtually. Um, the season is now over. We're all set for the draft lottery tonight. Real quick, just want to get your thoughts on, on this unique season, to say the least. You know, it, it has been unique, but it's very beneficial. And it's, it was, we said at the beginning of the year, we need to develop. This season is going to be about developing players. We knew we were going to start shorthanded. And, and certainly we were going to bring in 11, 12 new players. And, and I think when you look back after the, the world closed down in March, it almost feels like two seasons because we got a chance to get back up and running again in June and July. And then the opportunity to play certainly in Orlando was tremendous opportunity for us to grow as a team and grow as a unit. But I, I look at the time between March and, and, and August when we left Orlando as such an amazing opportunity to, to bond as a team and the time spent together because of COVID, but certainly also because of social justice awareness and everything we were trying to do there as a, as a, as a franchise, as a company, uh, I, I think was just so powerful. Well, that leads us to so many questions that um, our DC 12 Club members have sent in and they want to ask you. And what I love about you, what I love about Scott Brooks is that you guys, you answer the questions from the fans. And this is an opportunity for the fans to ask the questions and you to answer them. So this is from uh, DC 12 Club member Marvin Robinson. He wants to know, what do you feel is the greatest need for this team? Marvin, we got to get better at every position. We need more depth. I think depth and, con and continuity, watching the playoffs, uh, it's going to remind us every time when you look out there, the best teams are usually the ones that have the most depth that can sustain uh, an injury or two <clears throat> and be able to propel forward. And certainly the continuity, you can't constantly change your roster out. This year we did, we hit reset. We have 11, 12 new players. Uh, John and Bradley are the only two players on our roster. Uh, if you look ahead, to see, you know, in terms of longstanding Wizards. After that, it's, it's Troy Brown and Thomas Bryant. You know, that, that tells you how young these guys are. So I think the opportunity to get better uh, is always going to be the most critical at each position to add depth. But uh, if we were really to chop it up right now, I would tell you, we definitely want to get more athletic. Don't forget, tune in tonight. It is the uh, 2020 NBA Draft Lottery Show presented by Geico. It's the preview show. Uh, again, that's tonight getting set for the lottery. Uh, Rui Hachimura, he is going to be the representative for the Washington Wizards. He was the lottery pick last year, made by you. All right, Tommy, our next question is going to come from Zach. No last name, just Zach, our DC 12 club member. Uh, he wants to know how you would assess Rui Hachimura's rookie season. And what are you most excited about with him in year two? Well, Zach, Rui was a great addition to our team. And I think he's a, he's a player that fits where the NBA is going because he's versatile. He can guard multiple positions. He can score from every angle. And I think defensively, we're counting on him to improve along with the rest of our team. But I think in his first year, he showed that he's a, he's a core player and someone that we can really build on. I think he's going to really benefit from playing with a full season with Bradley Beal, playing a full season with John Wall. I've always found when you get good players, you put them with great players, those guys always perform up. And Rui didn't have the benefit of playing with a point guard like John Wall this year. And he still had one of the better seasons of all the rookies. And uh, as I told these guys, the best thing about your rookie year is when it's over and you learn from it. And what you bring back next season is really going to say a lot about you because you have to take a big jump in your rookie year and your second. So, Zach, I, we're really proud of Rui, and we have high expectations. Tommy, that leads us to the next question from our DC 12 Club member, Christy. Uh, you talked about the kind of the reset in Orlando, and she wants to know what player on our team impressed you most down in Orlando? Well, Ms. Christy, I think we were really excited about the way Thomas Bryant responded to the added responsibility. You know, he added – a great dimension to us offensively. I think we discovered a lot. We like to start the offense now with Thomas outside the three-point line, let him touch it a little bit. He's a great rim roller, but he also is a very good uh, shooter from deep. And he really, he kind of unlocked his three-point shot there in Orlando consistent-wise. And he, he carried it all the way through. And so we were really pleased with him. We were also, you know, 
pleasantly surprised with Jerome Robinson. You know, Jerome was a player that came to us at trade deadline, and actually he's only played 20 games for us, and eight of them were in the bubble. So almost half his season was spent in an unusual circumstance. And when he came to us, he, he was really – uh, he, he hadn't played a lot on a great team that the Clippers had, and uh, his, his game was struggling a little bit. And I think he's kind of got on track. He got some of the rust off, was able to score the ball. I think he was the third most improved scoring average of all the players in the bubble down there. So it was exciting to see those guys. And certainly we were pleased with a lot of people, but those two stood out to me as somebody that, that really made a, an impression. I can't say yeah, sure. Troy Brown's progress has been phenomenal. Uh, Jerome Robinson, if I'm not mistaken, seven of the eight seeding games, he was in double figures. So for a guy who wasn't getting much time with the Clippers, he came on and came in on in a big way, especially with Bradley Beal not there. He took over as a scorer. Um, this is from another DC 12 club member, Jeff. Outside of building a competitive playoff roster, what are some of your goals for this Wizards team going into next year? Jeff, we got to continue to get better defensively, and then we definitely have to add to our depth to sustain an injury during an NBA season. If you have quality players as backups, you, you can kind of, I'm not going to say miss a beat, but you can limit the hemorrhaging, if you will. We, we missed a lot of players for a lot of games this year, and that, it really took on too many losses. Uh, and we definitely want to mitigate that in the future by adding quality depth. I, I think we'd like to have some veterans as well but really we're one of the we were the second youngest team in the bubble us in phoenix I, I think boston was right there as well but we have a young team so we we need to really navigate moving forward with the balance between uh some better leadership and, and some young players that can really fill fill their roles well so that, that's what we're looking at and, and we're really excited for the future tommy you you you're getting us all set again tonight we've got the nba draft lottery uh Steve, right here, he's going to hit you hard. Uh, he wants to get right to it, our DC club, DC 12 club member. What are you looking to fulfill in this 2020 NBA draft? We definitely want to get a, a player that we, we feel can be a major piece for the future. And that may involve somebody drafting someone this year that doesn't play a lot next year that we have to develop for a year or two. Or it might be an impact player right away. We'll find out tonight where our draft position is. We're really excited having the 37th pick as well. I think there's quality depth in this draft. Um, and we certainly always want to develop. We have the most unique situation, I think, with NBA and G League partnerships where the Capital City Go-Go in two years, we have used them as much as any team in the, in the NBA uh, use their G League team, their affiliate, to assign players, to acquire two-way players, to bring a player from the Go-Go and roster them, to have that player become a rotation player. Uh, we've taken full advantage of it. We've grown coaches, staff, athletic training staff. We, we, it's just been a great incubator for us. So we're confident with our player development staff, with our coaching staff, that whoever we draft is going to get better. But to answer your question, it, you know, so much of it depends on where that number is, but it's going to be someone that's going to be an impact player for us in the future, if not next season. Don't forget the 2020 NBA preview draft lottery show presented by Geico is tonight at 7 p.m. Um, Tommy, last year you made the pick before you were named officially GM and you selected Marie Hachimura. I can remember coming to the office for the first time, meeting you for the first time. You've now been the GM. It's not even a full year that you're officially the GM and it's been such a crazy year, but what have you taken away? What have you learned in this experience? Just how important it is to stick to your principles. And really, what we, where I, we were blessed to get this job uh, a year ago or whenever it was, Justin, the, the days have, have slipped by me. But really what we tried to accomplish in that year was, was lay the foundation of what criteria it's going to take to play for the Wizards. And we're data-driven very much so. We're high-character driven very much so, hardworking. And I think we put a roster together in, in year one that gave us the ability to look at a lot of prospects. We, we made a lot of trades. We acquired a lot of young players on rookie deals. And, and hey, I hope all of them pan out. But the reality is some of them will be with us moving forward. Some of them won't. So it's very important that we get a chance to really evaluate them in NBA games, not in summer league, not in training camp. Let's get them, put the, throw them into the, to the deep end. And these guys have really showed a lot to us this year. I, I think we had some quality depth already with, with Troy Brown. But you know, Troy seems like he's been around forever. This was his second year. Thomas Bryant, this is his third year, and obviously 
Isak Bonga, Mo Bogner, they were able to come in and, and provide some good minutes. We acquired Jerome Robinson. Those are all players in their second year. So we're, we're looking to move forward and, and what we think the draft represents to us is, hey, let's keep adding pieces that, that can be valuable at depth. But we certainly know to get to the very top where we want to go, you have to continue to get more talent. And we'll, we'll get there any way we can. And we will not stop until we get this roster uh, to, to a championship level. So there's no question that no matter who you pick in the draft or multiple guys in the draft, the biggest acquisition this team will get is John Wall. When John comes back next season, pairs up with Bradley Beal, Rui Hachimura, uh, that's, that's as big as you can possibly do. So what do you see or how do you see, this is from Amanda, our DC 12 club member, asking how you see the dynamic working with Rui Hachimura, John Wall, and Bradley Beal. I would recommend to Rui that he watch as much film as possible, and he actually has John and Bradley when they played together. Because it's been a bit. You know, by the time we start playing again, John wouldn't have played in an NBA game probably for two years. Mm -hmm. But ball is ball. And John actually played practice with us. He, he, he scrimmaged with the Go-Go. He scrimmaged with the Wizards uh, before we had to shut down in March. And, and Rui found out real quick, just be ready at all times to catch a pass, and you're going to be in great scoring position. So they play very, very well together. Short sample size, obviously, but Rui's already familiar. And I would tell him, if you think it's fun playing with Bradley Beal, wait till you play with Bradley Beal and John Wall. And all that means is all the attention. They're going to have to pick where they want to put their attention, who they want to stop. And chances are Rui's going to be open a lot. And that's a good thing for him because he can make shots. Yeah, it was, it was really fun this year. When John did get to practice some, I can remember there was a shell drill. And John made this pass from the right wing almost to the left corner through a couple of defenders. And everybody just kind of looked at each other like, did that just happen? We've never seen that before. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that next year. We certainly, we certainly plan on it. Um, before we let you go, again, the 2020 NBA Draft Lottery Preview Show presented by GEICO tonight at 7 p.m., um, Tommy, as, as unique of a year as this has been, trying to evaluate players for the draft, not your typical workouts, how will you and your staff go about evaluating getting set for that draft coming up in October? You know, I almost feel bad for this draft class because they're going to be the most scrutinized draft class in history. Because we, we really haven't had a lot to do since March in terms of scouting. So we have meetings uh, all every week and usually two, three hours at a time. We've interviewed already 67 kids that are in this draft. Uh, once we get to our position tonight, we'll know uh, there's a lot of players that don't want to do interviews until they know roughly where your draft spot is. So that'll open up the doors for us tomorrow to interview a few more kids that are in the top lottery. But certainly I, I do think, Justin, when, when, you, when it all boils down to is, is to the continued uh, – uh, the, the way that we evaluate talent, the way we collect intel, the way that we apply data to all of our uh, process of, of selecting players, the, the more value that you're going to see in these players. And I really think we're, we're on to something really exciting. I love the way that we, we've come together as a scouting staff. We created the pro personnel side. Our college, mm -hmm. pro side, our college personnel side has been fantastic. I think it's, it's just exciting to see it emerge. It's only been a year. But uh, I tell you what, we expect a lot, and we, we plan on big results. And I, I just can't thank everybody from the DC 12 club for sending in your questions. I encourage you to, to send questions all the time. I appreciate it if you don't scream at me. Uh, you, can, you can text, email, whatever it is to, to get your questions answered. But I want to thank you for your loyalty. And well, certainly look forward to what we have coming up. Yeah, Tommy, um, I, I'm very lucky that uh, my first GM – and the NBA is you. I think our fans are very lucky to have you uh, as the GM of the Wizards because you're awesome to take the time to do this uh, on a night when I know all of our hearts will be racing, especially yours and the other guys and making that decision. Um, really appreciate you taking the time. And uh, we're all pulling for something magical to happen. Hey, Justin, thank you so much. And you, you had a crazy first year. And you're a part of the family. And, and we look forward to seeing so many more thrills to come. And, and tonight is just one night in history, but certainly it's an exciting time for fans, exciting time for us. 
but I really, really do not want to be in the lottery moving forward. You know, let, let's let's go ahead and start winning some games. I second that. Uh, again, don't forget tonight uh, the 2020 NBA Draft Lottery Preview Show presented by Geico. Tune in at 7 p.m. Tommy Shepard, thanks so much, and thanks to all the DC 12 Club members for sending in your questions. Uh, really appreciate it, and uh, we can't wait to see where we land, and we can't wait to see who we get. Uh, Tommy, thanks again. Good luck. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Take care.